Would you ever play Malema speeches on stream? Yes. I don't think people realize that Malema was my number one inspiration. Even before I really appreciated China. Actually, one of the reasons we changed our views on China. You guys know Infrared Collective. We didn't used to be known as Infrared. We were just a group. And when we started out, we did not have a positive view of China. We thought China was like the future. It's it's going to be capitalism with no democracy. And it's going to be the, you know, this crack, the Silicon Valley is going to turn us into... We had those, we had a really uh, bad view of China at the time, right? Yeah, we had a soy view. But then we started listening to the EFF and Malema, and we started to see how they were taking China's economy as inspiration. And that made us kind of change perspective about things like land reform and China, things like that. It all took was like a year, and we started to change our view of China. We never ever were anti-imperialists because of morality. You know, just because of this thing like, oh, I hate to call it slave morality from Nietzsche because it's an overused trope or whatever, but MLs in the West seem to be coming from that background where it's like they see anti-imperialism as a form of bourgeois philanthropy, right? They see it as bourgeois philanthropy and we didn't buy any of that you know we came from a pretty rigorous philosophical background so that was not we never ever bought into that shit, you know but we were still against you know the wars and everything we we're still against american imperialism but we didn't appreciate uh we didn't appreciate shit because of like charity you know whatever or because of just morality yeah, see, here's the thing. We saw Malema's break from the ANC as our inspiration for what we had in store for the Communist Party here in the US. We looked at how the EFF, we had this idea that there's just this problem in global communism and that the EFF represented this reconciliation of contradictions that's in the global communist movement. And we, we were like, you know what? China will have its own EFF too. But we misappraised China because as the years went by, we saw that Xi was, Xi Jinping represented this thing that we were seeing in South Africa, right? So we saw the EFF's populism in South Africa. And we were like, he's not an agent of the West, but he's also conducting the class struggle within the ANC. And the ANC as a party, was a Soviet-aligned party that was aligned with the global communist bloc at the time. So we said, okay, in China, something similar will happen. We just didn't know that it was already happening with Xi, right? You know, also the EFF is what made us change our view of the American left as well. Because we saw South Africa and we said, okay, you have the ANC, which kind of represents like the Democratic Party, I guess. In the U.S., we we're trying to like do a one-to-one -one with the U.S. So there's the ANC, uh, there's the DA, and they're not the Democratic Party. But we basically understood that an American leftist would be in the DA in South Africa. We'll see. Bye. An American leftist would be in the DA, the Democratic Alliance. They would be liberals in South Africa because we we studied South Africa and we found that all of the Human uh, are the animal rights people and all this kind of social justice people in South Africa. Besides the racial politics, everyone else who is involved in animal welfare and super, super deep into the climate stuff, they were all aligned with the DA liberals. They were all liberals in South Africa. Meanwhile, the EFF was seen as like a vulgar, populist, Trumpian movement. So we had to understand, like, and then here in the U.S., we had a similar contradiction occurring in the Democratic Party between, and this was in 2016, between the Bernie movement and Hillary. And we saw Bernie as a total realignment of the American left, which forced us to reevaluate everything we take for granted as leftists, right? The first instance of that was Chapo Trap House, so-called dirtbag left. And they basically were like, huh, hold on. We can be a little non-PC, right? We can be, we can do a little non-PC, and they they did that because of Bernie's movement. But then they reintegrated into Democrats, 
What Chapo did was, and the, the dirtbag leftists, was one-to-one -one a mirror of what Bernie did in regards to the Democrats. But we in our collective, we saw Bernie's movement from 2016 as a more fundamental break. We went deeper. We said, no, we're not going to come back to the fold of the Democratic Party. This break, this contradiction represents something much, much deeper, which must be fully drawn out and developed. Um... We have always been populists, I guess, right? We've always believed in uh, populism, whatever. But there was a time where we thought Trump was a fascist and we, we thought he represented the resurgence of Silic. We, we had a theory. Basically, our theory was that neo-reactionaries were planning on implementing like a neo-reactionary feudal dictatorship led by Silicon Valley in the u.s that was our theory and we it's so hilarious we thought trump was going to be their figurehead we're like oh trump's movement this fascist movement is gonna lead the neo-reactionary destruction of u.s democracy and, and whatever and whatever and then as the years passed by we saw how much trump was at odds with silicon valley and it started to and we saw even leading up to the election in 2016 we're like hold on wait a minute this is really weird right so we really changed all of our perspectives what about hugo chavez you said that was a huge inspiration it wasn't an inspiration for infrared it was an inspiration for me personally actually i want to guys tell you about my development personally and i'm talking about like in high school right in high school chavez was my biggest inspiration and at the time when i was in high school it was what is chavismo applied to europe was podemos in spain and syriza in greece and i was looking at this as the the this new populism this new left-wing uh populism that i was developing my entire politics or whatever around right um so that's where Chavez exerted its significance for me, the Chavismo. You gotta understand, the thing about Chavez, it's, it's the same thing here. In Venezuela, the vulgar, populist, reactionary, backward masses are behind Chavez, and the enlightened, urban liberals are with the right-wing opposition. So that's how it is for most of the world, right? And you you know, um, the true. you guys ever watch True Detective Season 2? At the end, you saw the, the they expose all the corruption and evil of the oligarchs. They would probably call it a right-wing reactionary show today, right? But at the end, when they leave America, they travel to Venezuela, and there's, they show like this um, this celebration, and there's people are waving Chavez posters, and ba the basic theme they were setting up was it's a glimmer of hope of that there's forces in the world that are challenging this corrupt oligarchical you know order and i think a right winger was the the, the right winger is the guy who made that show but this is before venezuela became a meme and became a point of political polarization should filipinos support duterte i don't know if you should support him but you should learn from him maybe it's similar to trump here you shouldn't necessarily support him but you should be careful about in what way do you oppose him that also means you, you probably should defend him sometimes when he's going against America and, and whatever. But you can you can be like what the EFF, my model for a left opposition to a imperial. So we developed the possibility, a conception of the possibility of a genuine left wing opposition to an anti-imperialist government, whether it's going to be in the Philippines whether it's going to be in Syria, whether it's going to be maybe even in Iran, although it's more complicated, whether it's going to be in um, uh, Russia, or it's going to be in... Well, China is more complicated because it's a one-party state. But it, it is the EFF. It's the EFF's relation to the ANC. So the way that works is that when the ANC... Thank you, Paracon. When the ANC is coming under fire by the liberals... Uh, the EFF steps and defends the ANC. When the ANC is coming under fire by foreign American and British or French imperials, whatever, the EFF steps in and defends them. So they, you can, it's that's what that's what I think is a popular front opposition.
right? And you have- I think the communists in Syria are like that. They don't unconditionally uh, support the government. They're critical of the government, but they do support the government against foreign imperialism and against uh, domestic terrorism. 